Thank you, Dr. L. Every single salutatorian speech written here in the past four years has begun with the same words. Good evening. However, by beginning my speech with a miniature meta-analysis on stage, I have avoided that fate. You see, we have spent a lot of time in high school trying to be unique and be ourselves, and this is my own attempt at that distinct us that we reach. But now, without further ado, good evening. Friends, family, faculty, administrators, and my fellow graduating classmates. Congratulations to the class of 2016, and thank you everyone for your support. We couldn't have done it without you. Whenever someone asks me, where are you from? I always have to take a moment to decide how to respond. There's so much more to deciding how to answer that question than whether or not it's worth explaining to someone where Clarkstown is located. I've lived in New City for essentially my entire life, and though not all of you can say the same, having gone to North, you must have at least experienced New City. But the answer to where you come from is more than just the name of a small town. It is the place and the people that you grew up around. It's those who you distinguish yourself among. But first off, what is New City? The town of New City, lacking the population to actually be a city, and often perceived as missing a York, has been my home as far as memory allows it. New City may not be the most exciting place, but its close proximity to New City plus York saves it from a more isolated feeling. And yet still, despite that, getting around without cars here is quite a task. Because of this, we have only obtained the ability to drive recently, and most of our socializing ended up in school. We've spent a fair share of our time at North. So much to the point that a conversation beginning with, let's not talk about school, usually leads to a conversation about school. It's what we've been doing on a day-to-day -day basis. One of the consequences of our growing up, and yet still, it is one of the most consistent things that we've had growing up. High school is a part of our identity that we can't deny. It touched all of us differently, though. Together, as the class of 2016, we have walked the same halls in different directions, the same halls with different destinations, the same school with different goals, and continued our path to adulthood, finding what makes us special along the way. But now, we are sitting at the brink of our send-off to the next step. Only a bit more stalling of the inevitable by me, and that's it. We're released with what we did documented. The places we have spent our time have here have just been settings. It's not the on-air conditioned classrooms that make the memories. It's the connections made with the teachers, passion found for the subjects, and friendships made over a project. It's not the bright stage lights that make a performance or award memorable. It's what you did there. And it's not the bits of rust on an old locker. Rather, it's the friends or teammates that you talk to while at it. The past four years have been an experience we've grown from and shared with others. From getting accustomed to the school to anxiously awaiting news from colleges, it's been a journey that we've been thrown through and gotten through together. Whether it's with the friends that we carried over from middle school and made the first day, people we wish we had gotten to know sooner, or teachers and family we've been with along the way. From our first days to our last days, we've become a better version of ourselves, but we did it together. So thank you to every friend that has brightened our day. Thank you to every family member that has helped us through a dark time. Thank you to every teacher that has slipped in valuable life advice into already valuable life lessons. It comes with a heavy heart that we must prepare our goodbyes. Haruki Murakami once wrote in Kafka on the Shore, memories warm you up from the inside, but they also tear you apart. As much as we may look back, at our years of high school for the good times, all will be coated with nostalgia, and they will be hard not to miss. But they give us a large part of our identity. As we move off into the world, whether it be a gap year, college, military, the workforce, or any other parts of our future where we will continue to build on this collection of memories. And though next year, we may be answering the question, where are you from, with, oh, just some suburb of New York City, 
The connections with the people and the location we've made will stay with us more than we realize. Thank you, and congratulations to the class of 2016. I see courage, and I see unlimited capability. 
Our former president, George W. Bush, once asked, and I quote, is our children learning? <laughs> Now, he clearly did not take English at Clarkstown North, but I can honestly say, at North, our children is learning. We excel in the class, on the field, in the lab, and on the stage. And sure, we've all learned the Pythagorean theorem and the elements on the periodic table. But as Albert Einstein said, education is what remains after, everyone has after one has forgotten everything that he has learned in school. More importantly, at Clarkstown North, we have learned how to learn, and our teachers taught us how to think, not what to think. And that is why, as Clarkstown North graduates, the future is wide open for us. There will be opportunities for us in a few years that we cannot even imagine today. Think about how the world has changed just in our lifetimes. When the class of 2016 was born, no one could have foreseen social, social media, flying drones, or 3D printers. And one of the great things about technology is that we can create marvels with just a laptop and some inspiration. Before, I mentioned some unflattering nicknames given to our generation. The one that has always bothered me, though, is the everybody gets a trophy generation. The inference is that we are rewarded not for success, but participation. We get prizes for just showing up. Older, ge older generations assume that we don't understand the value of hard work or the lessons of failure. But I don't see us that way. We may not have had the toughest time, but we are not soft. We grew up in a world shaped by a financial crisis that cost many of our loved ones their jobs, and by terrorist attacks that cost some of our loved ones their lives. We understand that important things can be gone in an instant. This has made us appreciative and resilient. We do not fear anything. As your valedictorian, I was asked to speak about the future. If there were any words of wisdom I could impart on you today, it would be that to have no fear. At the top of the list of things not to fear is failure. We cannot be afraid to fail because that means we will be afraid to try. Heed the words of Michael Jordan who said, I missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I lost almost 300 games. 26 times I was trusted to take the game winning shot and missed. I failed over and over again in my life and that is why I succeed. Be fearless, be passionate, and we, the class of 2016, can accomplish anything. I would like to thank Dr. L and the North Administration for providing us with a fulfilling high school experience. I would like to thank Mr. Maloney and the Guidance Department for all their help the last four years in guiding us through the college process. I would like to thank our teachers for their enthusiasm and encouragement. Steven, yeah, look up. Thanks for being the best big brother ever. It wasn't long ago that you were standing up here giving a shout out to me. You are truly my inspiration and best friend. I would also like to thank my parents. Without you guys, I would not be standing on the podium today. Last but not least, I would like to thank the class of 2016. We had, yeah, you guys be clap. <laughs> We've had a lot of great memories at Clarkstown North, and I know many of you are sad that it's over. But remember the words of the greatest doctor of all time, Dr. Seuss, who once said, don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened. Thank you, and again, congratulations to the class of 2015. Thank you, Benjamin, for representing your class so well, and best of luck next year at Emory University. At this point in time, we are going to present our graduates. I'd like to invite Mr. Aglialoro, and also I think Mrs. Adolph is joining us as well, to the podium. Mr. Aglialoro and Mrs. Adolph. Paid off. I certainly, I certify that the graduating members have met all the requirements of the Clarkstown Board of Education and of New York State and asked to confer on them their respective diplomas. Dr. Leonardos, based on our, based on your certification and with knowledge that the graduating members of the class of.
keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Throughout high school, I've learned that this means more than just watching your enemies closely to keep an eye on them. The truth is that some of the most unlikely relationships are the best ones. It is incredibly important to not just watch, but care for the people that may bother you, despise you, or rub you the wrong way. You can never predict who will become dear to you, or who, or, or who will even just come in clutch and help with some homework. I'll never forget the day I met a guy two years younger than me, but looked an easy four years older than me. We were shockingly similar in appearance, manner, and interests, and the worst part is that his first name was also Ethan. Who does this kid think he is? Right off the bat, I disliked him because I felt threatened. But after some thinking and some talking with my parents, I decided to bite the bullet and befriend the enemy. There are very few things I've been more grateful for. This other Ethan is now one of my greatest friends, and I consider him the little brother I never had. The lesson I learned here applies to more than just people, but also classes, clubs, and even movies or music that you may dislike at first glance. So I encourage all of you to befriend the enemy as I did. Reach out to someone you may not see eye to eye with, because they might become your best friend one day. In the spirit of putting differences aside, I now move my focus to something I know a lot of us in here consider to be not just an enemy, but perhaps a rival, Clarkstown High School South. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. In all seriousness, in all seriousness, our counterparts at South lost a very special person on August 12, 2013. Austin Luke DiGiorgio passed away from leukemia during the summer before ninth grade and will be graduating from Clarkstown South tomorrow. In honor of Austin and to show our respect for our fiercest rival, the senior class will be donating the remainder of our funds in Austin's name to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society to support the fight against blood cancer. Many of us knew Austin. He was an unrelenting source of joy, a personal sounding board who took our problems and returned his wisdom. A giver when he had nothing else to give. And to sum him up, a friend. We were told the ideal gift should represent our class. I think this gift, a donation to finding the cure, showcases our fundamental belief in perseverance. But I think that is only part of the class of 2016 puzzle. I think the act, more than the gift itself, is the full image you see when you put all the individual pieces together. Let me explain. Ethan said that by giving this gift, we, meaning everyone wearing this purple gown, is sparking a union with South in remembrance of a friend we all had. We're creating unity, and that's the complete image. That's what you see when you think about the past few years. Just look at our prom. When people got on the dance floor, we let go of all social boundaries and we just danced. Not as individuals, not as demarcated groups, not as cliques, but as a class. That's only one instance, but it represents our entire past history. We've been through so much together and that unifies us so, so much. We've been, and we still are, a class of troublemakers. We've been, and we still are, a class of risk takers. We've been, and we still are, a class of dream chasers. But above all, we've been, and we will always be, united. After all, I think it was a bunch of crazy old high schoolers that once said, excuse me, that once saying, we're all in this together.